Uh, hi everyone. So in this video, we're not going to be actually coding anything. Uh, I'm just going to be going over uh, just the HTTP request response and the host file uh, just before we get to actually coding the Node.js server. Uh, if you're already familiar with this stuff, please go ahead and skip this video, go right to the next one. Um, the only reason I'm making this is when I was first starting to learn this sort of stuff, making request response, you know, get request, uh, I found it kind of confusing. And I, and for me, I thought it would have been really helpful if I had someone go over it. So uh, I'll just try my best to kind of just briefly go over it. Uh, I definitely don't claim to be a networking expert. Um, so please correct me in the comments if I, I make some mistakes. But I think it might just help to give a general idea of what's going on. So first, we're going to talk about the HTTP request response. And then we'll talk about quickly the host file. Um, so let's get right to it. So I drew up a little diagram here and I apologize. I was drawing with the mouse, but I think it kind of gets uh, gets the message here. So essentially um, on the uh, right side here, I'm just going to switch to the brush here. I'll say this. We got the server and of course we're going to be using uh, Node.js. We're going to install Node.js and then uh, program the server in JavaScript. But there are other options. So for example, you might have heard of XAMPP uh, with PHP. You can program that uh, in the backend language, for example. Or you can use Tomcat with Java, or I believe it's IIS with uh, C Sharp. And if you want, guys want me to make another video or other tutorials about those, I'd be glad to. But um, this tutorial is going to specifically focus on uh, Node.js and using JavaScript. So. Essentially what's happening here, and what I'll show you here in the uh, browser, is if we type in HTTP colon, and then we type in this address here actually, 127.0.0.13000, and we hit enter, uh, we'll see that the uh, sort of the website we've been working on, it comes up. And before, uh, in the previous videos, we were just pulling this from the file structure, but uh, in this uh, the next tutorial is coming up. We're going to start working from the server. So I just want to go over how sort of, you know, as I typed that into the URL here, what exactly is going on. So we were here on the client side on the browser and we typed in this URL. And what we did with this URL was send a get request. And the get request uh, comes from the hypertext transfer protocol. And you can see here at the HTTP colon slash slash and then this is the IP address 127.0.0.1 and this is the location uh, or the identity I guess I should say of the computer that the server is running on so in our case it's 127.0.0.1 because we're running on the local machine so this can also be called local host so what you'll notice is if I open up another tab here and I go HTTP colon slash slash and then I put in local host 3000 you'll notice that we actually end up oh um, yeah that's one too many T's there so <laughs> let's type in local host 3000 there we go and you'll see we actually end up in exactly the same spot as we did when we typed in the IP address so localhost, if you type in localhost, that acts as sort of the domain name or the alias to the IP address. So that's the first part. And then we typed in the port number, in our case, 3000. Now, we could program that pretty much to be any port we want. But essentially, what this means is that we're, the location that we're uh, sending the request to is on the computer that has this IP address. And then once it gets to that, that computer, with that IP address. So that means this computer here, this machine will be 127.0.0.1. Uh, it'll go to port 3000. And a server, the Node.js server that we're going to program, is going to listen on port 3000 for any GET requests. And a GET request, again, is what we're typing in the URL. So essentially, that request comes to the server. The server gets the request, and the server will then serve up the HTML, CSS, and JavaScript that we um, that we coded previously 
to display in the browser. So that's what's coming in the response. So essentially we can view that if we go look at the view page source and here's what came back in the response, right? So uh, we requested uh, this link and in response, we got this HTML. And that's essentially what we're gonna be programming with, uh, with Node.js and JavaScript is um, we're gonna basically make a server that's gonna listen for requests and then serve up the HTML and CSS. So that sort of covers that. Oh, and then we'll talk quickly about the host file as well. So in order to do that, uh, we can just click on your uh, Windows File Explorer and we'll go to C Drive and then we can go to Windows. And then if you scroll down here to System32, there we go. And we could scroll down again to drivers and etc and the host file. So here it is. And basically, if we open this, we can open it in Notepad. And you know what? Actually, we're going to have to open it in administrator mode. So if we type in Notepad here and run as administrator, the reason we have to uh, open it in administrator mode is because we're going to alter it. So, and in order to alter this file, and so it's already here. Uh, it's not there. You might be wondering why. Well, we just have to go to all files and we'll open this. And here we go. Uh, we have to be in administrator mode to save, basically make changes here. And so this is essentially ask, acting like a domain name server. And it's just going to essentially translate any domain name localhost. As, we, as you noted, we typed that in. And it translates that to the IP address 127.0.0.1. But so we could change this as well. So we could say 127.0.0.1 and then we can change what name. So if we want to call this comment, comment section, uh, yeah, we can just do it like that. Lowercase s, we can just copy this. Um, and we're also going to have to save it. So now if we type that in to the browser, instead so paste uh, comment section colon 3000 uh, you'll see that it also takes us to the same page and the reason that worked is because we added that um, to uh, to this hosts file and by adding that here it created sort of a an alias for this ip address uh, or domain name i guess and now we can use that as uh, to access that website as well. Okay, so I hope that sort of cleared up a little bit about servers and the uh, hypertext transfer protocol. Um, we're going to be diving into the code next. So if you like this content, please like and subscribe. And I'll see you next time.